Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. You guys often hear me say in these videos, leave a comment below and we'll make the video that you need to see. Uh, unfortunately, a bunch of you are doing that. Uh, and stalls keep coming up. We get comments like this one, where folks are a little bit uncomfortable with power on stalls in particular. And I want you to know, this is totally normal. When you stall the airplane, part of the wing stops flying. Some of the flight controls don't work the way they normally do. That's a high deck angle and power on stalls. It's a high power setting. And if you get it wrong, the airplane could spin. Uh, so it's not really a comfortable maneuver and, and feeling uncomfortable about it is a totally normal experience. However, you do have to understand them, learn how to recover from a stall, uh, and ultimately learn how to avoid them completely, just recognize and avoid. Uh, but at the private level, we teach you power off stalls and power on stalls, and the power on stalls are typically demonstrated in two different ways, either out of an over rotation or simulating attempting to clear terrain. In this video, I'm gonna show you both of those ways, but neither one of those is how I would start teaching stalls. To get comfortable with this, we can walk you into it at a slower pace. And if you're a CFI out there, you should walk your students in like I'm about to show you. And if you're a student out there, see if your CFI can work with you like this. Let's go to the airplane and check it out. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. I want to let you guys all know that I'm doing a webinar on Thursday, March 28th. This is for wings credit. It is called Common Landing Errors and How to Fix Them. Uh, so we're going to go through all the common landing errors that I see on the flight line. And most importantly, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks for how to fix those problems. Um, if you're interested, click the link in the description or visit the link that you see here on the screen. Uh, it's free to everybody. We do offer wings credit and it's happening Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m. Central. See you there. All right, aviators, so today we're gonna to talk about stalls, or more, more specifically, anxiety during stalls. Typically power on stalls. Now, a lot of you know that you learn power on stalls so that you learn how to control the airplane without spinning it, right? We wanna make sure that if you were to accidentally stall, that you know where to look, you know how much rudder to apply so that you uh, do not spin the airplane. So we typically simulate these as takeoff stalls, right? So a lot of you have probably seen this demo where you take the aircraft, after clearing the area, you make sure nobody's around, you slow the airplane all the way down to 55 knots. This is probably how some of you have seen this demonstrated. 55 knots, when you get to 55 knots, you are going to put in full power as though you're taking off. There it is, full power, right rudder, pitching up into it, and introducing a stall from here, right? And we still haven't even heard the stall horn. There it is. Stall warning horn. Deck angle really high. Power screaming. We don't know what's going to happen. And we pull. And we stall. That's a fine way to demo a stall. But I have two issues with it. One, it's pretty uncomfortable, right? Like you're sitting there with the power full. The deck angle is high. The airplane's shaking. You don't know where to look. You don't have a reference, right? You're worried about spinning. That's not the way to introduce stalls. In this comment, he mentions zero Gs, and that's part of why we don't start here. With the deck angle so high, the tendency is to pitch forward hard and fast to recover, uh, and that definitely will cause you to experience lighter G loading. That's part of what makes it uncomfortable, and that's part of why we don't start here. And to be totally honest, I don't even think it's that realistic, right? Like, I mean, if you over rotate to the extent that you just saw this deck angle in the aircraft, I mean, you don't know to push forward aggressively, um, we got bigger problems, right? Like, I don't see that as a necessarily realistic way that an aircraft might stall. Uh, but the scenario is is that perhaps you forgot to reset your elevator trim, perhaps you loaded passengers into the back, and you're just not expecting this high deck angle. But an equally appropriate way to practice a power on stall is out of a VY climb, right? And this one seems more realistic to me. It's like you just departed Truckee Airport, and in my area we have mountains. But let's say you just departed Asheville, North Carolina. It doesn't really matter. you got hills around. And you're in a VY climb, just trying to clear terrain. You're just looking out the window saying, hey, it's beautiful as I depart Asheville here. But I'm not sure I'm going to clear that mountain, right? So almost inadvertently, 
your arms get short, is what we like to say, right? Like almost accidentally, you're pitching up without even knowing it. So this part of the process is very slow. You're just kind of looking outside and pitching up, and you don't notice that your speed's decaying from 65 to 60 to 55, right? You're just looking at that mountain, trying to clear the mountain. This seems like a relatively realistic way to get into a power on stall. And here we are in basically the same place, stall horn on, deck angle high, waiting for it to happen, just keeping our eyes outside the airplane, and we're pulling and pulling and pulling. Once you get here, just make that thing happen. So pull, and there it goes. There's your stall. A little bit of a left break, all right? And then the aircraft comes level. Perhaps a less anxious <laughs> way to demonstrate the stall is more relaxed. That's my preference. So if I don't know you, if I've just met you, and I say, hey, let's do power on stalls, and I'm still trying to assess where you are with it, I'll probably ask you to do that second thing. Just pitch to a VY climb and pretend you're trying to clear a mountain and slowly go into a power on stall. I'd rather, that'll tell me more and be a um, sort of less hectic cockpit environment than doing that out of the rotation at 55 knots. Uh, but I'm about to show you the best way to start. This is how I would truly start working on this stuff with you, is using stall exercises. And if you've never seen this, you should really look at our ground school app. It's really like having a CFI in your pocket. Everything I teach you, everything you've ever heard me teach you is probably in the app in a better way. Um, so here's stall exercises. All right, so we just got to the practice area. We finished our cruise checklist. We finished our clearing turns. We're at 3,300 feet today because uh, it's just a strange altitude and it helps maybe avoid any collision hazards. Let's just go ahead and slow down to minimum controllable airspeed. Um, I like to do it clean. The reason is it gets the nose higher up and it allows you to practice with the Lindbergh reference a little more than it would if you had flaps. Um, because remember, if you had flaps, you're gonna increase the angle of attack, which means you know, you're gonna be pitched down just a little bit more to get the same amount of lift. Um, all right, so here we are slowing down to minimum controllable airspeed. We're 3,300 feet. And we're just trying to get a feel for what the stall break looks like and where we should be looking during the stall. Now, hopefully, you can't see forward because I can't see forward, so hopefully we're in the same boat here. Now, the Lindbergh reference is this area right here. So, and keep in mind, by the way, guys, that uh, as per the ACS, they don't really want you doing what I'm doing here. They don't want you flying around with the stall horn on. Um, so if you're doing slow flight, you want to be faster than this. But here, this is just an old school like skill building exercise to help you get comfortable with stalls. So this is the Lindbergh reference right here. I'll give you a little X. Um, now, I'm giving you a little mark there because I don't know exactly what your horizon looks like. But the idea is you're looking at the horizon. That's the area you're going to find it, though. And watch this. When I let go of left rudder, watch what happens. Do you guys see that? Right? Now I push right rudder. Now I don't have to look at the ball. I don't have to look at the ball. If I if I don't see yaw out there in my Lindbergh reference, then I'm not yawing. Watch this, let go of the rudder. There it is. Add rudder. So next time you're wondering how much rudder should I have in a climb, you should have enough so that there's no yaw in your Lindbergh reference. Period. That's it. <laughs> Who needs a ball? Alright, now once you're here. Notice we have a little bit of power, not a ton of power, but we've got like 1,900 RPM. That's to give you a little bit of a left turning tendency. Now, we don't want an enormous left turning tendency because we're practicing here. You'll get the enormous left turning tendency when you do your power on departure stalls. This is somewhere in the middle. This is not full power, and it's not no power, right? So the, the idea here is that you're practicing holding altitude, you're practicing looking at the Lindbergh reference, and you're practicing reinforcing the idea that it is releasing back pressure that breaks the stall. I don't, want you I don't want you to touch the power here at all. I want you to, to pull the airplane in and out of stalls and just simply drill in that it's releasing the back pressure that breaks the stall. So watch, it looks a little bit like this. Here we go, back down to 1900. Okay, get me on heading here. Um, let's slow down just a little bit more, like 1800 I think is the power setting we want. Got a little too fast there, let's slow down a little more, maybe 1500. <laughs> all right, we'll find it. There it is, stall horns back. Okay, now I'm looking at my Lindbergh reference, you look at your Lindbergh reference, and then we're just gonna pull the airplane into small little stalls and release it, just like this. Practicing, not allowing any yaw to happen in the Lindbergh reference, watch this, that's the stall warning horn screaming, there's the stall, there's the recovery. All right, now we're flying again, All right? Notice what happens in the recovery. It's the stick goes forward. Did you see me touch the power? 
Negative, you did not see me touch the power. So let's try that one more time. Let's get that stall horn back on. All right, ready? One, two, three, and pull. Watch this, watch what breaks this. I'm looking at the Limbird reference. You're looking at the Limbird reference. There's the brake, stick forward. You see that? Not too far forward, we're not staring at the ground, just a little bit forward. If you're a private owner that owns a late model Cessna 172 and you currently lease it back to a flying club or a flight school, consider leasing it to us. We're looking for another Cessna 172. We'll put good flying hours on it and take impeccable care of it. If you're interested, email me at jason at learnthefinerpoints.com. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. Leave a comment below and now you can see we definitely will make the videos that you need to see. I'm Jason Miller. And the most important thing is until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.